10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, we have ignition, 2, 1. Ignition and full thrust, 5 good SRVs. And liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket, carrying satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper Internet Constellation. Marking the start of a new chapter in low Earth orbit satellite connectivity. The is now on close loop control, engaging first throttle segment. And we've completed our pitch program. Engine operating parameters continue to look good. And we've successfully completed our roll program. Hydraulics continue to operate nominally. Mach 1, Atlas 5 is now supersonic. Body rates continue to look good. Engine continues to operate as expected. Throttling back up. You are hearing Sarah Bailey Glasgow providing launch vehicle ascent data. We are now seven miles in altitude, moving at 1,700 miles an hour. Now passing one minute into flight. Vehicle continues to pass through the center of the rain track as expected. SRBs continue to operate nominally. Throttling down, engine continues to burn as expected. Body rates continue to look good. Vehicle is now one half of its liftoff weight. Max Q passing through maximum dynamic pressure. Coming up on SRB burnout. And we have good indication of SRB burnout, 10 seconds from SRB jettison. Throttling back up. And we have good indication of jettison of all five SRBs. Engine continues to burn normally. We are now 32 miles in altitude, moving at 4,000 miles an hour. We just heard confirmation of the solid rocket booster jettison. These additional motors augmented the thrust at liftoff to give Atlas rocket an extra boost to reach its circular low Earth orbit destination. These SRBs are called GEM-63s, which stand for graphite epoxy motor and are 63 inches in diameter. The most obvious difference you'll see between Atlas and Vulcan SRBs is the nose cone shape. Vulcan has a conical nose cone, whereas Atlas has a duckbill or O-drive shape. We're coming up here on our next mission event, Jettison of the Payload Bearing. Let's listen in to Sarah. He needs to move down the center of the range track and is moving at 5,300 miles an hour. Body rates continue to operate nominally. And we are now holding acceleration at 2.5 Gs in preparation for payload bearing jettison. And we have activated the Centaur Reaction Control System. And we have passed the Carmen line. We have exited Earth's atmosphere. The vehicle is now one-fourth of its liftoff weight. And we have good indication of payload bearing jettison. And good indication of CFLR deck jettison. Engine continues to operate as expected. Flight commentator Sarah Bailey Glasgow just called out Body confirmation of payload fairing Body jettison. The composite fairing protects the spacecraft as it pushes through the harshest parts of the atmosphere. Next, we'll hear callouts for cutoff of the Atlas first stage engine and separation of the booster stage, followed by ignition of ULA Centaur second stage. These events occur when the first stage has escaped Earth's atmosphere, getting above the Kármán line and into space. The Centaur upper stage with the Kuiper satellites attached then takes over on a trajectory to a precise location in space. Let's just listen in as we approach these milestones. Body rates are smooth. Hydraulics continue to look good. 30 seconds to go. Boost phase chill down in progress. Temperatures are operating as expected. The U is gone to open loop control as expected. Engine continues to operate nominally. And we've completed boost phase chill down as expected. And we have good indication of booster engine cutoff. And we have good indication of centaur separation. Restart on fuel and locks, good staging. Ignition and full thrust. Arlton is running nominally. Steering has been enabled as expected. 
engines are continuing to operate as expected.